Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, dear scientists. It is indeed a real pleasure and an honor uh, to be here today with ESPON and so many, uh, how should I say it in English, um, known scientists, proeminent scientists in the room. I'm here to represent the European Commission, that is to say, the policymakers that Ilona has been talking about, who needs your evidence, who needs your research in order to build up adequate uh, policies for the future. I'm also here as being the head of the department within the European Commission, which is responsible for the ESPON program in terms of co-funding and in terms of uh, supporting the ESPON program. And in this respect, I would like to draw your attention to the current policy landscape, very briefly. The member states have decided to go for a renewal of the European territorial agenda. This is a process that will take some two years, and hopefully we will have a new territorial or a revamp, modernized territorial agenda by 2020 for the post-2020 period of time. In parallel, there will be some uh, new leaders leading the European Commission as from the autumn of next year. And I'm pretty much convinced that they will want uh, to take stock of what we have been achieving when it comes to territorial development, uh, but also what will come next, and they will ask us in this respect. So I feel I have a personal responsibility to be well prepared in order to feed into the policy thinking process of the future European Commission. Last but not least, next year we will be celebrating the 10th anniversary of the Lisbon Treaty on the functioning of the European Union, which for the first time has embedded territorial development as one of its uh, goals under cohesion policy. So I hope that with these elements of background, you understand better the reason of my presence here today, even though I'm not part of the research community as such. And talking about the ESPON scientific research community and its friends, I do hope that all of you will get involved in the future and will contribute to ESPON's upcoming research. We are in the European Commission very much, very much indeed, supporting ESPON in its attempts to broaden the pool of scientists applying to their tenders. We've been particularly keen to see a larger variety of researchers and research institutions from all parts of Europe working on ESPON studies. This is indeed very much needed for all the good reasons that Ilona has been mentioning, but also because we need to work more on mapping all the current ongoing initiatives in the field of research according to the various levels of uh, research development so, and application. We need to build up what I would call a value chain. That is to say, ensuring that the project that we develop complement each other and contribute to the goal that we will have defined. I would dare to say the overall or overarching narrative of the territorial agenda and hopefully on the next generation of the territorial agenda. This is absolutely essential. Along similar lines, we have also been pursuing the two mantras respectively of first, improve ownership, and secondly, better contextualization of ESPON research. What do we mean there? By improve ownership, we precisely mean active involvement of all interested policymakers into the steering of each research, so has to facilitate its application. Whereas, by better contextualization, we mean careful positioning of each research among existing and ongoing research by other research actors. And this is exactly my mantra now mapping contribution to the value chain. We live today in, and 
This is a bit uh, a simple story to say. In challenging and rapidly changing times, triggering a lot of transformation and in particular structural transformations. In order to be able to promptly respond to nowadays challenges and opportunities, the policymakers that I represent here today desperately need knowledge to be both produced and spread out faster than ever. And believe me, please, we are absolutely desperate on that front. So. Knowledge can no longer reside within only academic institution alone, as we all need to grasp in its uh, portrait for in the, we all need to grasp uh, it uh, in our pursuit for the right responses and policies at the right time, and I would even dare to say and add in actually real time. These policies by all means need to be underpinned by knowledge and therefore evidence, which for the moment takes too long to collect, consolidate, produce, and disseminate. I would dare to say that live feed of evidence is indeed needed and this evidence would need to be already packaged, digested for us policymakers to quickly move ahead and directly process the results of research of evidence into proposals for transformational <coughs> changes. The challenge here is very high and the pace is very fast. And this is precisely where we need your best and fast effort. The evidence you produce needs to take into account that it has to be articulated to the most essential messages in such a way that this would be ready to apply into policy making and I would dare to say into strategic policy making in the first place. Besides the research production cycle needs to become quicker and much more participatory, inclusive of us policymakers, which would mean also demand driven, so that we are sure the final products <coughs> will be well targeted to the needs of the policymakers, not only those in the European Commission but those in the member states, those in the regions, those in the territories, those in our cities. We at our end, within the Directorate General in charge of regional and urban policy in the European Commission, are doing our best to keep up with this space and timely collect and consolidate to the extent possible the evidence needed to help us design new adequate policies and update and streamline the rollout of the current ones. The key document upon which we base ourselves for further policy development is of course <coughs> our periodic and flagship cohesion report that precedes every new cycle of cohesion policy planning, that is to say of cohesion investment planning. You may have realized that with the European Commission proposal for the next multi-annual financial framework, 2021-2027, seven years, actually the budget for cohesion policy over Europe has become the first budget of the European Union and is now more important than the budget devoted to the common agricultural policy. This is a very important political signal there that I wanted to give to you. We partly, when it comes to cohesion policy planning, rely on ESPON research wherever possible and available in addition to our own research or research that we outsource <coughs> ourselves directly. And we need to do better in this respect. In my own department, we need to ensure a proper mapping of all the research activities which are going so far. We need to build up some sort of a taxonomy in order to connect the various research projects and drive them 
with an overarching narrative, an overarching goal that will support smart policy making and in real time policy making. It is for us in the European Commission, Zeus, extremely important that ESPON research is synchronized not only with our Commission policy timing cycle, our cohesion, sorry, policy timing cycle, but also with the cycle of all the other policies in the European Union <coughs> or developed at EU level, which impact directly or indirectly on territorial and urban development. And ESPON has been moving in that direction as well. ESPON is not only about cohesion policy, it influences directly or it contributes to the development of a number of sectoral policies at EU level. And we also need that the results of the ESPON program and of the whole research community production, are produ which are produced, sorry, are usable and following the same definitions. Otherwise, we cannot aggregate uh, them. We cannot consolidate the results of this research and the research will go to the dustbin. Last time around, there have been issues <coughs> along this line when we were preparing for the seventh cohesion report and I would hope to avoid this in the future and I must say I'm indeed confident that we will avoid that in the future. Finally, I wish to share with you that realizing how knowledge and continuous feed of evidence is important. I will never insist enough on that. We are now ourselves in my own department under my leadership, enhancing our internal knowledge pillar for urban and territorial development. That is the reason why I'm here today for the scientific conference of ESPON and next week myself and my team members will go together to the OECD in Paris in order to discuss how we can better cooperate and reinforce each other in our corresponding research and evidence resources. To that extent, we are also looking forward to exploring what ESPON contribution could be here. We are also looking forward to exploring what will be precisely the positioning of ESPON and of its activities in the post-2020 period, that is to say for the new programming period. More details will follow soon. We are still at the stage of brainstorming in my department, but I do hope that for the end of the year, we will have a clear <coughs> picture of the direction we want to take. And in this respect, I would like to thank ESPON in particular because yesterday I was reading in the Eurostar the very good mapping that you have started to make when it comes to positioning ESPON within the broader research landscape. And the graphs that you have been developing, mapping ESPON according to the levels of research and the applicability of research is indeed a very appealing and inspiring approach for ourselves in the European Commission <coughs> to modernize our approach to research and evidence in the field of territorial development, sustainable territorial development. I will hand here now, and I wish to wish you all a very productive and indeed inspiring day. Thank you very much. <laughs>